We are in Texas in July. We are chasing alligator gar with Captain Kirk Kirkland. Before I had ever been down here, I just saw an alligator gar. Great big ugly fish with big teeth. Looks like an alligator with a back fin. And I'm like, I gotta do that. And I found out you did this stuff. We came down, we did a TV show. Then the trouble started. He told me that one of them struck one of his bobbers one time. And I got to thinking, Mr. Muskiehead, I can catch those on lure. And so we've been talking about it for five years and decided to do it. And I had to drag my son Seth down here to torture him, you know, because dad likes to do things the hard way. But we are in the Trinity River area in July, and we're going to chase alligator gar casting musky baits. And we'll show you the next bite. Alligator gar have gotten somewhat of a bad rap over the years when it comes to being considered a trophy fish. Slimy little boogers and stink. <laughs> I wish the camera oh. could smell how stinky <laughs> this is. But Captain Kirk Kirkland knows this prehistoric species of predator like the back of his hand. He's talking. Hey, it's the next bite. Hey, how are you? And wants everyone to know when it comes to these armored tooth riddled behemoths, there shouldn't be any argument about their true place in nature. These alligator gar have long been thought to be trash fish. They've been in most of the southern states. They are able to tolerate salt water. They go out in the salt water quite often, come up into all these freshwater rivers. Texas has one of the best remaining populations of alligator gar anywhere in the world. These fish spawn every, say, three to seven years sometimes. These fish will live to be 80 to 90 years old. So they're not a trash fish. Any fish that gets to be up to 200, I've even caught fish over 300 pounds. And any fish that gets that big should be thought of as a trophy fish. And so anybody that is interested in a big predator, we're in Texas and it's the greatest place in the world to catch one. Alligator gar are literally one of the toughest fish that swim in fresh water. All right, <laughs> what is that thing? It's a man? long nose. <laughs> Hey man, that's the first gar I've seen on a lure. I'm getting the net. Get in here, fella. <laughs> what is that now? That's a long nose. That's a long nose. Their interlocking scales are like armor and their massive bony jaws are lined with teeth that are the stuff of nightmares. Not just for their prey, but for anglers as well. Cute guy. Holy moly. That's a baby for here. Believe me, from what I've seen rolling out here, I know this is a little one, but I, I've never seen a gar, you know, caught on a lure, so. Yeah, you get a big one, we'll have to uh, put a rope on him. <laughs> I've actually got a glove, but you know, I'm a, I'm a professional, so I, uh. You don't need no stinking glove. <laughs> <laughs> there, cute fella. We're still pondering now whether or not these, how apt they are to hit them or if we're bumping into them. To be real honest, we're not absolutely sure. We know they'll hit artificials. And that's why, you know, we're doing this whole thing. But it's, it's just kind of a crazy deal. This particular fish was actually hooked just behind the gill. We really don't know what that hard bony knows, if he bit it or not, or if we just hit him. It's just to see this many fish rolling all around you and the semi-panic that actually sets in when you're seeing a ton of them like that. It's gonna be so much fun to try and pattern this, try and figure out what these fish may or may not hit, the best way to approach it. The gar's facial anatomy is the reason why casting hard baits for them is crazy. There's got one. Something. Got a, got a long oh, nose, he come off. He come off, that was a gar though. And he was in the mouth. He was in the mouth, that one hit it. So why would anyone want to try something so difficult? That feel like a good one? Yeah, it felt like a pretty good fish. 
Five years ago, Kirk and I got together, did a show for the next bite. The way he normally fishes for these fish is fresh, dead bait, and basically throwing them out in the river and waiting for the fish to come along. But you notice the look of this fish, and you notice that it's definitely a predator. And then the thing that tipped me off was that he once in a while says they'll come up and hit that slip float. And I thought, man, there's got to be a way maybe to get these things in artificial. And then we basically started talking about this. And you know, you, you've had other things happen that make you think they'd hit a bait. Yeah, Pete, we've fished here in the lake a lot of times, and when we got our baits out here, we'll get a bite, you know, fish pick the dead bait up and start running with it, and I'll quickly jerk the anchors up and start reeling other baits in, and they'll grab one of the other baits as I'm reeling it in. So, you know, I mean, they've got to be a reaction, you know, when they see something like that. And even on a great day with bait, I don't catch but three or four or five. So, I mean, you know, I guess you just gotta keep casting until you get one. <laughs> Those are the rules, man. That's it, man. <laughs> The next bite is brought to you by Mercury, number one on the water. Amsoil, performance for serious adventure. Tracker boats, fish the finest. Bass Pro Shops, your adventure starts here. Berkeley, catch more fish. Mustad, stay sharper, longer. Lowrance, fine, navigate, dominate. Motor Guide Trolling Motors, engineered for anglers. Strike King, legacy of domination for 50 years. And Powerpole, swift, silent, secure.